Next question. Next question. I like it. What do we got? What advice do you have for those who have weak, poor, or otherwise ineffective leaders? How do you manipulate that situation? Mm -hmm. So, again, I, I think I may have actually answered this question before. Mm -hmm. But I'll answer it again. Sure. When... I, I, when you are in a situation like this, when you got somebody that's weak or ineffective leader or a poor leader, the answer is always the same. What you do is you lead. <laughs> you lead yourself. And I hope people that listen to the podcast on the regular, you all knew what I was going to say there. You all know that when someone is not leading you, then you lead them. You pick up the slack for the weakness. My leader doesn't want to come up with a plan. Cool, I will. My leader doesn't want to give a brief. That's fine. I will. My leader doesn't want to mentor the younger troops. That's okay. I will do it. Leader doesn't want to take the blame when something goes wrong. That's fine with me. I'm going to take the blame. And you think about that one. That one can be tricky. Mm -hmm. Because you think, well, I'm going to look bad in front of the, in front of the more senior boss. Mm -hmm. Now think about it from the senior boss's position. If, if you work for me, Echo, and the boss comes in and we, the, the mission was a failure, and I'm, the, and I'm the guy that's in charge, and I say, sorry, boss, we failed. It was Echo's fault. And Echo goes, hey, sir, it was my fault. Here's what happened. Mm -hmm. Here's the mistakes I made, and here's what I'm going to do to fix it next time. Who do you respect more? Yeah. Of mm -hmm. course, I'm looking to promote you. Yep. I actually want to promote you, and I want to fire myself <laughs> for being a guy that's passing the buck and passing yeah. the responsibility and not taking ownership of anything. So imagine what that looks like before you get all intimidated by taking the blame for something and think you're going to look bad and think you're going to get fired. Think about what it looks like from the senior perspective and you actually have to imagine what it will look like underneath you. Mm -hmm. You have to see it from your perspective because it's even when you think about their perspective, you still can be in fear of it. You mm -hmm. think, oh, I'm the guy that's taking the blame. I'm the one that's going to get fired. Mm -hmm. No. And, and am I saying this like blanket? That there's sometimes where if, if the boss screws something up really bad, like let's say it was something like classified information got left out mm. and it was your boss that literally left it out and you go, no, it was me. Well, not, first of all, you're not telling the truth, yeah. right? So yeah. you're not telling the truth and the person made a mistake that's, that there's no excuse for. Yeah. So that's not a situation that I'm talking about. And if your boss was the type of person that said, yes, I'm gonna put the blame on him, I would burn them alive. <laughs> I'd be like, actually, <laughs> here's what really happened. Mm. So I'm not talking about that type of situation, but when you're doing an operational thing where there's mistakes that get made and your boss is scared to take ownership of them, take ownership of them. Mm -hmm. Not that, it, you will win in the long run. Um, now, now, here's the part that is crucial and critical and the most challenging part of this and that is when you step up and lead you want to make sure you aren't stepping up and stepping on your leader mm -hmm. you don't want to step into their little spotlight you don't want to impose yourself in their leadership limelight and glory you don't want to do that you 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 can't do that you want them to get the credit. You don't want to have them be intimidated by you in any way. And this is hard because when you start taking ownership for stuff, it's very it can be very um, intimidating for the person that's above you because they think, dang, this guy, just he's just a bold bastard that's stepping up and taking charge of stuff. <laughs> yeah. And they might get intimidated at that. So, so what you have to do is you have to do some, some indirect maneuver warfare here and for instance, if they don't want to, if they don't want to come up with a plan, maybe you start saying, "Hey, sir, what do you think of this? Would this be a good plan?" Mm -hmm. And maybe if you're, if they're not mentoring the younger guys, maybe you say, "Hey, you know what? I want to do this. Uh, I want to spend some time with the guys after work. Do you mind if I have a little session with them, kind of go over what we learned on last deployment, mm -hmm. or hey, about this new regulatory thing that's come out in the business world, and I want to get our younger troops to know it. Do you mind if I teach a class on that?" So you're you're asking them permission and, and you might even say, you know, hey I think it would look really good for you too if we were doing this mm -hmm. So you want to make them look good um, and 
those are the ways that you do uh, that you step up and lead but make sure you're not stepping on your leader because mm-hmm. that 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 could backfire and you could end up in a situation where they feel intimidated and you're getting put in the doghouse or fired or demoted or in trouble mm-hmm. because they feel intimidated by you so use caution if you have a good leader some leaders just aren't that aggressive mm-hmm. and when you start getting aggressive they start they actually like the fact that you're getting aggressive. And they like, I mean, I work for some people that love the fact that I would t- step up and take charge. They had no problem with it because they were good, confident leaders. It's the insecure leader you have to watch out for. Yeah. The insecure leader that's worried about looking bad. Mm. And that's another, to, to change perspective again on this, when you, as a leader, have somebody that's stepping up and taking charge, ask, and you start feeling intimidated by it, ask mm. yourself why. It's probably your ego. You're being a weak leader by being intimidated by your subordinates. If your subordinate is doing your job and doing it better than you, let get, step up and start looking, how can you go up the chain of command? How can you look up and out? How, what other areas can you focus on since that leader has stepped up and is making things happen? That's awesome. That is awesome. We want that. Mm-hmm. That's decentralized command. That's building other leaders underneath you, which is what your goal as a leader should always be. And I'll tell you, every time I see someone that goes, oh, I got a weak leader, I'm always like, lucky you. Yeah, yeah. Lucky you. Take advantage of that. Take advantage of it. Do whatever you want. Yeah. So you have such a good opportunity when you have a weak leader above you. Don't look at that. Don't, don't get all downtrodden because, <laughs> man, my leader just doesn't motivate you. Awesome. Yeah. Motivate yourself. Get, char- get in charge of things. Take advantage of it. Make things happen. It's awesome to have a weak leader. I love it. Get after it. Yeah. It's going to give me so much mobility in my in my in my job, right? I'm so much more mobility than if I've got someone. Hey, if I got someone that's a strong leader, that's great too. Right. But weak leaders no factor. Mm. I'm going to take advantage of it. Yeah, I feel like you you Yes, I if, would. <laughs> <laughs> you're like you got a weak leader and you and you're kind of um you're not stepping up. You're essentially allowing the the group the team the totally. objectives to f- kind of fail in Absolutely. a way you're just, you're kind of allowing it and then in a way too depends on what you do but in a way you're kind of be, being like hey all right you're allowing the excuse to be valid you know mm-hmm. where which kind of makes it invalid really when you're like hey i could step up but hey it's the leader's fault as long as it's not my fault <laughs> you know the, my leader's not that good you know it's you're really not taking much ownership if yeah. you just point your finger at your leader and say, this is a weak leader. Yeah, That's not what we do here. Not what we do at all. Yeah. And the times where I've had weak leaders, I, I always took advantage of it. Like I said, one time, and I've talked about this on the podcast before, we fired our leader. You know, mm-hmm. We had a little mutiny. That only happened once for me, but yeah. it happens. That I mean, I, I obviously I don't know the all the details of that, but... In a way, isn't that you just stepping up and making it happen? I mean, well, if yeah. that's really the yeah. the, the impending result, like, dang, that's that's kind of where we're gonna arrive at, really. Basically. Given yeah. us stepping up, if if that's how it goes down, that's how it goes down. But you stepped up, you solved the problem. If there's a problem, and that was a problem, there's your solution right yes. there. Yes, up and down the chain of command, you gotta own it yep. for sure. 